yes uh, good evening everyone yeah so today we are going to look at lecture theory um which we are going to handle the topic of a costing method so um costing methods are systematic approaches to assigning cost to specific products services department or activities so uh, they involve identifying classifying and accumulating all the expenses incurred in production or operation our uh, common common cost components include we have direct materials uh, the material the raw materials and component directly used in producing a good so and um, we have direct labor these are wages and benefit paid to employees directly involved in production and then we have overheads uh, these are indirect costs associated with production uh, such as we have a rent utilities and then depreciation so uh, let's look at the uh, some of the examples of the cost methods so and um, different costing methods are suitable for various business type and production processes so uh, some of the most popular uh, methods they include we have job costing so uh, job costing are uh, tracks uh, it tracks cost for specific job or uh, projects uh, ideal for custom work or unique products so we have a process costing a uh, process costing it uh, accumulates cost for a continuous production process uh, suitable for mass production of uh, standardized goods so uh, we have activity based costing it assigns cost to activity rather than production uh, providing insight into cost drivers and then improving efficiency so we have a standard costing uh, it compares actual cost to predetermined standard cost um, highlighting a various a variance and aiding in cost control so we have a direct cost uh, it separates a variable costs um, we have uh, for example we have the direct materials and uh, direct labor from fixed cost uh, the examples we have overhead then are useful for short-term pricing decision so this can be useful for short-term pricing uh, decisions so how can we choose the right costing method so are uh, that the choice of costing method depends on the various factors which may include uh, we have factor one we have the type of production a uh, continuous or batch production uh, custom or standardized products and then uh, factor number two we have cost complexity uh, it's the number and nature of cost component involved so uh, number factor number three we have decision needs uh, it's pricing uh, cost control process improvement or profitability analysis so we have a consulting with a quality a qualified accountant or the cost management professional can help business select the most appropriate uh, costing method for their specific uh, need and then let's look at the benefit of uh, cost accounting methods so uh, it improve uh, we have improved accuracy in pricing and cost products and services and then another word it enhance cost control and identification of cost drivers it helps in uh, identification of the cost uh, drivers it helps in uh, informed decision making on resource allocation and process improvement and then uh, it's great uh, it helps in greater transparency and accountability in cost 
management and then it helps in competitive advantage through efficiency cost or optimization so let's look at job costing uh, job costing can also be known as project uh, costing uh, which uh, in an accounting method that uh, tracks the cost associated with individual cost or project So let's look at the theory categories of the cost, uh, the theory categories of the cost, uh, job costing. So we have direct materials. Uh, these are the raw materials and component directly used in a specific project. So, um, and then we look at direct labor. These are wages and benefit paid to employees directly involved in completing the project. Uh, so this may include the computers, the tailors, or the programmers that indirectly uh, involved themselves in uh, the completing the project. So we have overheads. Uh, these are indirect costs associated with running the business and supporting all projects. So for example, we have the rent, we have utilities and depreciation of equipment. So uh, these are the allocated to each job based on a predetermined method. So let's look at the job costing cycle. Um, job costing cycle we start our uh, we look at the job planning and estimation so uh, before you start a business before you before starting any uh, project costs are estimated based on material needs labor hours and then expected overheads so this helps set a budget and determine a competitive price so and then we have our number two uh, step we have the cost accumulation so throughout the project all expenses related to materials labor and overhead are tracked and assigned to a specific job so this can involve the, the time sheet uh, materials acquisitions and then invoices so um process number three we have job job completion and then costing so when the project is finished actual costs are compared to the initial estimates so you compare your actual cost with the initial estimates what you have in other words what you have estimated so uh, this reveals any variances and provide insights into cost control and then profitability so and um, our fourth our process we have reporting and decision making so our cost reports are generated you generate cost reports then you summarize the total of cost of the project and its profitability so this information of management make informed decision about pricing future projects and then resources allocation So let's look at the benefits of job costing. Uh, job, job costing helps in arch rate pricing. Uh, by understanding the true cost of each product, you can set a competitive prices that ensure profitability. So uh, it helps in cost control. Um, by tracking individual project cost, help identify areas for a cost reduction and improve overall efficiency. So um, it helps in profitability analysis. So um, job costing allow you to measure the profitability of each project and make informed decisions about future projects to take on. So in other words, you can be able to measure the profitability of each project and then it helps you to, to get the, 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 the you, it helps you to make the, the, the decision that uh, the decision to take on the, the project that is good for your, it helps you to make decisions that can help your project in future.
so it helps in improved client relationship is it improved client relationship so our uh, accurate cost tracking fosters trust and transparency with clients leading to better relationship it enhances decision making. So job costing data provides valuable insights for project planning, resource allocation, and overall business strategy. So let's look at process costing. Process costing are deals with continuous or repetitive production, accumulating cost for defined period and then allocating them to a unit produced. So that is our process. That is the, the meaning of process uh, costing. So let's look at the cycle um, of process. Uh, process costing in other words the process um, of process costing or how it cycles flow so a uh, production period we have one at uh, the pro production period our goods are continuously produced over a specific period uh, typically a month or quarterly Costs include materials, labor, and overheads are accumulated for the entire period. So we have an equivalent unit of production. So at the number of units completed or partially completed during the period is calculated. So taking into account their stages of completion, this ensures a fair allocation of cost to finished and unfinished goods. So we have a cost per equivalent unit. Our total costs for the period are divided by the equivalent units of production, determining the cost per unit at each stage of completion. So we have inventory valuation. The cost per unit is used to value both finished goods in inventory and work in progress. So we have the un work in progress or unfinished goods at the end of the period. Let's look at the benefits of costing. It simplifies tracking. It's efficiency for mass production, avoiding the need to track individual jobs. So um, it controls cost. It helps identify cost drivers and then uh, partial areas for improve for improvement in the production process. So um accurate product pricing. By understanding the true cost per unit, business can set accurate prices and stay competitive. So it provides a liable method for valuing finished goods and then a work in progress inventories. It improves decision making. So which hopes are to which hopes on production planning, resource allocation and then process optimization. So when can we use process costing? Process costing is ideal for the business that uh, produce large volume of standardized goods in uh, continuous re repetitive flow. So have a minimal variation in production specifications and production processes. Need efficient cost tracking and inventory valuation for mass production. And then let's look at the examples of industries that commonly use process uh, costing. For example, we have a uh, chemical production, we have food and beverage processing, we have textile mani um, manufacturing, we have pharmaceutical manufacturing, and then we have oil refining. So, um, what are the other challenges of process costs? 
So our challenge number one, we have accuracy of, of equivalent units. Our calculating equivalent units can be complex, especially when multiple production stages and verifying degrees of completion. So, uh, which makes uh, the accuracy of uh, equivalent units difficult. So, we have the overhead, we have uh, the challenge of overhead allocation. So, um, choosing the appropriate method for allocating overhead costs to production stages can be subjective and impact cost calculations. So, uh, we have inventory evaluation fluctuation. Uh, changes in fluctuation, volume, or cost can lead to significant fluctuations in unit cost and then in inventory valuation. Let's look at the ABC revolves around the three keys concepts. So we have the activity, we have the cost drivers, and then we have the cost allocation. The specific, we look at the cost activities. The specific task or processes in performed within the organization such as um, order, processing, product, uh, product design or quality control. So we have the cost drivers. So it's uh, the factors that influence the cost of activity like the number of orders processed, design interactions or qual quality inspiration performed so we have cost allocation assigning the cost of activities to the product or services that consume them based on their usage of the cost drivers So, uh, implementing um, how how can we implement the ABC? So um, let's look at the steps. Step number one: we have identify activities, break down the business into discrete activities across all departments. Or we have assigned cost to activities. Uh, calculate the cost of each activity, include direct materials and labor and overheads. So we identify cost drivers. We have to determine the factors that influence the cost of each activity. And then we measure the activity consumption. We have to track the utilization of each activity by different production or services. So we allocate the cost to production or service as we assign activity cost to product or services based on their activities consumption. So let's look at the benefits of ABC. Um, we have improved the product cost costing. More accurate understanding of product costs leads to better pricing and profitability analysis. So it en enhanced cost control. By identifying cost drivers helps pinpoint areas for, pro for cost reduction and process improvement. So it is strategic decision making. It helps in strategic decision making. Um, it provides valuable insights for resource allocation, um, product mix, optimization, and then outsourcing decisions. So let's, um, we have another benefit. Uh, we have customer 
profitability analysis. So ABC uh, helps identify profitability and unprofitability customer segmentation. So in other words, you can be able to identify the uh, profitable and then also unprofitable customers. So you segment them, you put. So we have a performance measurement. It allows for more accurate performance evaluation of departments and activities. Let's look at the examples of industries that commonly use uh, by the ABC. That commonly use the ABC. So we have um, the manufacturing, we have health care, we have financial services, and then we have the professional services. So those are all the examples of industries that can use our ABC. So let's look at the challenges of ABCD, activity-based cost. So um, we have challenge number one, implementation complexity. Uh, implementing ABC requires significant effects and then resources for initial setup and ongoing data collection. So um, we have subjectivity in cost driver selection. So uh, choosing the right cost drivers can be subjective and impact cost allocation accuracy. So uh, we have increased data requirement. So by tracking activity consumption and cost drivers necessitates detailed data collection and then analyze. So that's all for today's lecture. Thank you. We shall meet on any.